before we start, uh, you'll notice when you watch this video, there are not 10 albums that I've listed here. There are actually nine. That's because I'm an idiot and cannot count. And two other things I should mention as well, corrections. Well, one, how did I miss the new My Dying Bride album from two weeks ago? The reason, I just hadn't caught up with my inbox and I was deliberately avoiding the new single because if it's one of my favorite bands, I like to wait until the full album's ready because if I've heard two or three singles leading up to it, I lose interest in them on that first immersive experience. Number two, the Rotting Christ album was not due out on the 26th of April, it's due out on the 26th of May. Again, idiocy is the reason for that. I had it in my album calendar under April when it should have been May. I don't know how I got those two mixed up. So that Rotting Christ album is not out until the 26th of this month. So enjoy the video. Apologies that there are only nine recommendations in here, not 10. Let's start with a genre which we seldom mention on this channel, probably because none of us really enjoy it. But there is one exception. So we're talking about the genre of power metal and the great female-fronted Canadian band Unleash the Archers, who released their new album on Friday the 10th of May called Phantoma. I was a big fan of their last album in 2020, Abyss. Indeed, it was number two in the Screen Rush Repeat top 40 albums of that year. Brittany Hayes, what a vocalist. Her range is incredible. I know at the beginning I said female-fronted power metal and that 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 doesn't really do them justice because the musicianship is incredible as well just imagine a great operatic singer with judas priest and the painkiller era behind them but also playing some tasty metallica riffs some fantastic vocal arrangements as well and even backing vocals and there was i remember there was a guest vocalist male vocalist on the last album i can't remember who it was but the singles were very strong from the abyss album of 2020 so high hopes for this one especially considering that they're following a contemporary classic and as i said at the beginning probably the only power metal band that i listen to unleash the archers so we're going to go from that to one of the most hated bands in death metal probably the most disrespected band in the scene six feet under chris barnes obviously was originally in cannibal corpse this is his band the sound to metal blade records the last three records were critically panned i mean brutalized they were constantly showing up as the worst albums of the 2010s the worst death metal band of all time i've never bothered listening to six feet under i mean this is album number 18. um so i do want to give them a listen just to find out why people hate them so much you know you hear descriptions like oh it's just lacking in motivation they're going through the motions it's meaningless the lyrics are atrocious the music there's no thought gone into it the best thing you can do is when you encounter something like that, go and listen to the album, make your own mind up. But I am intrigued as to why the last three LPs have been given scores of one out of ten across the board in various, various magazines. Uh, we're moving over to England for the third choice. A minor legend of the, certainly of the late 90s, Stockport's finest, Kill to This. They've got the new album out called Variant. And that's released on Revolver Records. This is their first LP since 2003. Now, I remember these as a teenager. Their 1998 Deviate LP was very well rated. And I remember Kerrang! had it in their top 20 albums of the year. And more importantly, Terrorizer magazine had it in their top 40 albums of 1998. So they've got some pedigree, industrial metal, didn't really ride the wave of new metal at the end of the 1990s, but very few of the British bands did. I know you had like one minute silence and groups like that, but yeah, Kill to This were always seen as more industrial. I know that Barney Greenway from Napalm Death had appeared on one of their albums as well. So they had the best of both worlds. The underground liked them and also perhaps some of those kids who would listen to Pitch Shifter and One Minute Silence would give these a listen as well. I know that Dave certainly likes this band and has interviewed members of this band. And of course, I know them because the drummer um, was on the last My Day and Bride record, wasn't he? Is his name Jeff Singer? Can't remember what his name is now. Um, but yeah, he, he's a founder member of this group. So let's go over to album number four on this list. I'm going to Poland for a sludge metal album. 
The artist is called Sonata, and the album is called Chasing Shadows. It's a self-release, and this is album number five. Sludge Metal, what more can I say? Actually, the press release for this calls it a cross between Yob, Yankee, Oscar Bravo, that, that do metal band from America, and Alice in Chains. That caught my attention straight away, and as I say, every week we always need at least one sludge metal album on this on this list. Don't normally say that about black metal, but we are going to choose a black metal album for the next one. And we're going to Belarus, a band called Downcross, and their album is called White Tower, and it's released by a Carvum Artrum Rex. I wish my Latin was better, but it's not. Uh, this is the sixth album since they released their first LP in 2019. Do they not have anything better to do? You're not really going to criticize an artist though for being so prolific. Six albums in five years. Wonder what the secret is. Are they any good? Is really going to be the main question, isn't it? So that will be yeah. Uh, that's going to be the black metal album this this week that I'll be listening to from Belarus. Let's change genre. Let's actually go for a post-punk album. We're going to go to Sweden, and the band is Missiles. Their debut album called Weaponized Tomorrow, and it's released by that great Finnish record label, Smart Records. Post-punk, big fan of this genre. Out of all the post-genres, post-punk and post-metal are definitely uh, my favorite two. I, I, I just think of Killing Joke, The Cure, Joy Division, all these great bands that we, uh, you, do you know what, you can even put in there, you can even put in there, uh, what were the band called who did the Pretty in Pink soundtrack? English band from London. I've got one of their albums behind me as well. I can't think now. Psychedelic Furs. See, I, I, I would refer... I would say that they're post-punk as well. Very catchy band, but I don't know what missiles are going to be like. You'd expect uh, some melancholia, some sorrow, some, uh, some poignant lyrics, wouldn't you, as well? So, yeah, um... That's that's going to be the palate cleanser on this list. Three to go. So let's go to number seven. Now this is such a strange hybrid. First of all, let's announce the band, Oath Swan. And it's an EP called For Those Who Breathe From Darkness. This is a Greek band. It's a self-release. It's their fourth record of their career. And they describe their sound as progressive post-metal meets metalcore. I mean, you would not put those in the same bracket, would you? Metalcore and post-metal. One's for adults and another one's for teenagers. So that'll be an interesting mix. And it's for that reason alone that I put it on this list. Album number nine is on the list because I'm a big fan of another group that this artist had just finished a tour with around Europe. So the band are called Demersal. It's a self-titled sophomore album. They're from Denmark. It's released on about eight different boutique labels, CD, vinyl, cassette in different countries. Too many to name. Their sound is post-black metal with a bit of hardcore in there as well. The band that they have been touring with is the great Danish post-metal band Collapse, spelled with a K. And I'm going to be interviewing them on the ADK Rock and Metal channel in the next few days as well, so look out for that. Um, so yeah, Dimerso. They've toured with one of my favourite contemporary bands, so for that reason alone, I am going to give them a listen. And we always finish, don't we, with the 10th one, either with the big name release or the one I'm most looking forward to. Probably both here. And um, of course, we're talking about Knocked Loose. You won't go before you're supposed to. It's their third album. Probably the most famous contemporary hardcore band on the planet. Probably the most metallic of the hardcore bands that have emerged over the last 10 years. Isaac Hale, the guitar player, is a riff beast. Big death metal influence in this band, even though their origins are hardcore punk. A lot of groove, some chunky riffing in there. And of course, it's a follow-up to 2019 sophomore effort, A Different Shade of Blue. I remember listening to that when it came out. Kerrang! magazine, Metal Hammer. They were all over this record, weren't they? It was, it was certainly one of the albums of the year in 2019. So, five years in between albums. I, you'd expect these, I think, did they do a split release or a couple of EPs in between? But um, yeah, certainly the heavy music industry is going to be looking forward to this. So Knocked Loose, you won't go before you're supposed to by a pure noise records. Go and check it out. <laughs> 